welcome back to me, Joanna Space Activist. Today, I'm going to be turning to a physicist you've probably heard of. That's right, Sir Isaac Newton. So, I'm going to be, today I'm going to be talking about his three laws of physics. So, let's get right into it. So, Newton's first law is inertia. So, say you have the ball here. Or... A bowling ball. So this ball is a pretty light ball, it's not as heavy as a bowling ball. But I'm just going to throw it across the room. It only just bounced off my telescope. But let's say I had a bowling ball with more mass, and I threw it onto the telescope. Well, who knows what could happen to it. So because the, the, the small ball that I just threw has less mass, it has less inertia, because it has less tendency to resist change. But but the bowling ball will keep doing what it's doing because it's probably going to break my telescope and just go through. So the bowling ball has more inertia. Now this idea connects nicely to Newton's second law of motion. Net force equals ma. Like say you have a hockey puck sitting on a perfectly frictionless ice rink. And no ice isn't perfectly frictionless, but stick with it. If you're pushing the puck along with a stick, that's a force on it. That isn't being counseled out by anything else. So the puck is experiencing acceleration. But when the puck is just sitting still, or even when it's just sliding across the ice after you've pushed it, then all the force are balanced out. That's what's known as equilibrium. An object that's in equilibrium can still be moving, like the sliding puck, but its velocity won't be changing. It's when the forces get unbalanced that you start to see the exciting stuff happen. And probably the most common case of a net force making something move is the gravitational force. So you just throw a five kilogram ball straight up in the air and then, you know, get out of the way, because that could really hurt if it hits you. But the force of gravity is pulling down on the ball, which is accelerating down at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. So the net force is equal to ma, but the only force acting here is gravity. This means that if we could measure the acceleration of the ball, we'd be able to calculate the force of gravity. And we can measure the acceleration. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. So the force of gravity on the ball must be 5 kilograms, which is the mass of the ball, times the acceleration, which comes to 49.05 kilograms times meters per second squared. And we use this equation for gravity so much that it's often just written as Fg equals mg. That's how you determine the force of gravity, are those run as weight. Now these units could be a bit of a mouthful, so we just call them newtons. That's right, we measure weight in newtons, not kilograms. Kilograms are a measure of mass. But now we're going to go to Newton's third law of motion. You probably know this as every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So I'm going to exert a force onto this table. And I can feel the force that it's exerting on me back. So every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But if this is true, how can I move things like, how can I lift this book or this book or this book here? How can I lift these things? But because there's sometimes there's more going on than just the action and reaction forces. For example, when a reindeer pulls a sleigh, Newton's third law tells us that the sleigh is pulling back on it with equal force. But the reindeer can still move the sleigh forward because it's standing on the ground. When it takes a step, it's pushing back on the ground with its foot, and the ground is pushing it forward. Meanwhile, the reindeer is also pulling on the sleigh, while the sleigh is pulling right back. But the force from the ground pushing the reindeer forward is stronger than the force from the, well, the sleigh, which is just pulling it back. So the animal just accelerates forward, and so does the sleigh. So one takeaway here is that there will be no Christmas without physics. So I hope this helped your understanding of Sir Isaac Newton's laws of physics. So don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and thanks for watching.